Okay, the next section we're going to cover is um, the methods used to collect and preserve fiber evidence. Some of the potential sources at a crime scene would include things like rugs, bedding, clothing, um, car seats. And the correct way to collect the evidence is using things like there are special vacuums, um, adhesive tapes, and forceps. And I included some pictures there at the bottom. There's the um, special vacuum that they would use. There's some adhesive tapes. And then there are also what's called trace evidence lifters. It's almost like an adhesive tape um, that lifts up the, the um, trace evidence. That actually shows you um, hair samples that have been lifted at a crime scene. And then, of course, there are forceps. So once the evidence has been collected, you want to identify the source and location. You want to make sure that you prevent any cross-contamination. And very important, you want to make sure you correct, collect a reference uh, sample for comparison. So in that case, you'd want to collect any suspect fibers, and you'd also want to collect that standard reference sample or the known fibers. When you package fiber evidence, you want to package it in separate paper bags. So if there's our evidence at the bottom there, you'd want to collect it with the forceps, place it in a paper bag, and then you would want to make sure that you would collect a standard reference sample if that were the suspect, so you had something to compare to. Next, you want to identify what type of fiber it is. So you do a couple things. You do macroscopic observation, which is just actually physically looking at the fibers for any details, no, any colors, any specific shapes. Um, and then you want to do a microscopic examination. And that's something we're familiar with doing um, in the hair lab when we're looking at things like the diameter of the hair, again, the color under the microscope, any striation patterns that you see, um, shapes of the weaves, and then length of the fibers. You want to compare the uh, unknown to your standard reference. You can look for what's called a physical match. So you might actually see a tear that under the microscope you can line up and match. You want to find out where the, what the origin is of that fiber. And then we can use a, a, do a side-by-side -side comparison with the comparison microscope. So you take your standard reference and compare it with the suspect. And below what you see is a picture of a fiber where you can actually see it was torn out. And when they put it together, they can actually get a physical match. Um, in terms of matching um, known and unknown fibers, if there are large quantities of fibers, we'll do um, burn tests, which is something we'll do in class. Some of you may have already started that. Or we can use liquids like hydrochloric acid um, to look for characteristic um, properties of specific fibers. When we have small quantities of fibers, we uh, want to use the polarizing light microscope. And that actually uses a special filter that allows fibers to be viewed within specific wavelengths. And so when you see the fiber, that whatever the appearance is will indicate what type of fiber it is. And then we can also use infrared spectrometry, spectrometry to analyze the, uh, and compare the dyes that make up the fiber. And then just to review the evidentiary value of the fiber evidence, it has associative evidence. So we can't link it to a specific um, piece of clothing or to a specific manufacturer or, more importantly, to a specific person. There is no test to connect a single fiber to a garment. The only exception where we were able to do that was the Wayne Williams case, which you um, saw our video already on um, the Atlanta child murders those fibers that they were able to find, and we'll see a video clip um, in class, 
those fibers that they found from the rug, they were actually able to link back to the specific manufacturer of the rug and to the actual purchase of those rugs and installation. And it all linked back to Wayne Williams. And so that's it for today on the um, evidentiary value and collection of trace fiber evidence. And we will proceed to the laboratory examination.